we just want to welcome you to our Bible study on today. We are grateful to God for his goodness, his grace, his mercy. We praise God for his power and his infinite wisdom. And at this time, we're going to go to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for just the privilege of studying your word and for you providing us with this technological means to be able to engage in the study of your word. We ask that as we dive into your word today, that it will find a resting place in our hearts, that it will challenge us, that we will be inspired and encouraged to be the people you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been in a series uh, looking at a different kind of spirit, and we take this from Numbers chapter 14, verse number 24, where the Bible lets us know that Caleb had a different spirit. Uh, and we've been exploring uh, this different spirit over the last few weeks. Last week, we mentioned that a different kind of spirit, that Caleb's spirit is a spirit that has faith and not fear. Uh, today, we turn to our second point, uh, which is this different spirit sees opportunities, not obstacles. Uh, and uh, we, we see Caleb in Numbers chapter 13, and let's look at verses 25 through 30. Numbers chapter 13, uh, verses 25 through 30. At the end of 40 days, they returned from scouting out the land. And the men went back to Moses, Aaron, and the entire Israelite community in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back a report for them and the whole community and they showed them the fruit of the land. They reported to Moses, we went into the land where you sent us. Indeed, it is flowing with milk and honey, and here is some of its fruit. However, the people living in the land are strong, and the cities are large and fortified. We also saw the descendants of Anak there. Uh, the Amalekites are living in the land of the Negev. The Hethites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live by the sea and along the Jordan. Verse 30, then Caleb quieted the people in the presence of Moses and said, let us go up now and take possession of the land because we can certainly conquer it. Uh, Caleb had a different kind of spirit. Uh, the men uh, the 10 men who brought back the bad report, uh, they said, uh, th there are people in the land that we cannot conquer. The land is occupied with uh, the Canaanites, Jebusites, Amorites, the Amalekites, the Hethites, and we just cannot conquer them. But Caleb, uh, he quiets the people and he says, we can do it. Uh, these people are not obstacles, they are not opposition, but this is a divine opportunity. One of the things that we see that these 10 men had, the, these 10 men who brought back this bad report had a yeah, but problem. Uh, yeah, uh, the land does flow with milk and honey like Moses said it did, but there are some strong people who live there. Yeah, the fruit of the land is good, but the cities are fortified and it'll be hard for us to attack them. Uh, there are some people who have a yeah, but for everything. Uh, I need to ask myself the question, do I have a yeah, but problem? Uh, yeah, it's a good idea, but yeah, I know this is what we've been praying for, but yeah, I know God promised this, but, and all it takes is for a few yeah, buts to get the people nervous and kill an idea that is of God and will bless the people of God. Uh, you can come up with reasons for not doing just about anything. There are plenty of reasons why we should not do what it is that we believe God has called us to do, but the fact that God has called us to do it is reason enough to do it. Uh, these 10 men uh, had everything on their side, yet didn't want to take possession of the land. Uh, they had already scouted the land and confirmed the, that the reports about it were true, 
They had the promise of God. They had the favor of God. Yet they saw the obstacles and the opposition instead of the opportunity. But Caleb had a spirit that said, there's no reason for us not to go and possess the land. We should go up because we can certainly conquer the land. And in your life, do you see the obstacles and the opposition or do you see the opportunity? Uh, do you see the obstacles and the opposition or do you see the opportunity? Uh, one of the interesting things that we notice in scripture is that it is often in the face of great obstacles that God provides the greatest opportunities. Uh, it's often in the face of great obstacles that God provides the greatest opportunities. Let's, let's look at some biblical examples of this. Luke chapter 21, verses 12 through 19. Hear what Jesus says. Luke chapter 21, verses 12 through 19. But before all these things, they, and he's talking to apostles here, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to bear witness. Uh, so your persecution, your imprisonment will give you an opportunity, disciples, to bear witness. Therefore, make up your mind not to prepare your defense ahead of time, for I will give you such words and a wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will even be betrayed by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. They will kill some of you. You will be hated by everyone because of my name, but not a hair of your head will be lost by your endurance, gain your lives, or, or by your endurance, you will gain life. Uh, God wants his people to be bold. God does not tell his disciples, you won't have any obstacles. You won't have any opposition. Everything is going to be a walk in the park. No, that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says to his followers, they're going to hand you over to persecute you. They're going to put you in jail. But when they do that, when you're facing your greatest opposition, that's going to be the greatest opportunity. Yes, your opportunity to bear witness. That's your opportunity to let your light shine. That's your opportunity to say a word for the Lord. God can give us the boldness to see the darkest of circumstances as opportunities to shine his light. My Lord, God gives us the boldness when we see opportunities and not obstacles. He gives us the boldness to see the darkest of circumstances as opportunities to shine his light. A different kind of spirit sees opportunities and not obstacles. Uh, we see this spirit demonstrated in Galatians chapter six, verses nine through 10. Galatians six, nine and 10, hear the word of the Lord. Paul encourages us, let us not lose heart in doing good for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Paul says, don't get discouraged, don't lose heart in doing good for in due time, we will reap if we do not grow weary. Here's the thing about doing good. Here's the thing about being bold and taking a stand for the Lord. You don't see the result. You don't see the benefit of it immediately. And what happens is often because our good is not well received by others. We didn't get the response we thought we would get from other people, we decide, well, it was not worth it. But the word of the Lord is telling us, while we have opportunity, do good. You won't always have the opportunity. Your life 
is but a vapor that appeared for a little while and then vanishes away. We don't know how long we have here on this earth. So while we are here, while we have the opportunity, while we have blessings to be able to share with others, we should do good. And when the time is right, we will re we reap if we don't grow weary. Don't get tired of doing good. Keep planting seeds and the harvest will come. The spirit of Caleb sees opportunities and not obstacles and opposition. Listen to Colossians chapter four, verses five through six. There, Paul instructs the church at Colossae, conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace as though seasoned with salt so that you will know how you should respond to each person. Uh, he says, conduct yourself with wisdom toward outsiders, those who are outside of the body of Christ. Make the most of the opportunity. You will be presented with an opportunity to share the gospel uh, to be a blessing to others. And he says, let your words be seasoned with grace, be with grace as though seasoned with salt. People on the outside will talk to you crazy. Those who don't know the Lord may step to you the wrong way, but God wants us to conduct ourselves with wisdom toward outsiders. I have an opportunity to share the word of the Lord with them. I have the opportunity to be an example of a Christian, a child of God. God is holding me to a higher standard. And so when I have opportunity, and often this opportunity comes in the face of someone not treating me right, not talking to me the way I want them to, while I have opportunity in dealing with people outside of the body of Christ, I need to conduct myself with wisdom. Do we see people as those who need a savior or do we see them as an inconvenience? Are we ready to cancel people who don't talk to us the way we want to be talked to? Or are we ready to just give up on people who are lost because we may bump heads. The word of the Lord wants us to season our speech with grace so that we will know how we should respond to each person. How I talk to you may determine whether or not you will be receptive to the gospel. And so we need the wisdom to take advantage of the opportunity that God gives us to speak a word for outsiders, to outsiders. And that tells us that the opportunity that God gives us are not primarily about us. They are about him. So many times we're so focused on wanting God to do for us that we're unaware that God is really blessing us so that his name can be glorified, glorified blessing us so that his word can be shared with others. He's presenting us with an opportunity not to lift ourselves up, but to lift Jesus up. Don't forget that it is God who is the one presenting you with the opportunity and God is the one giving you the wisdom. God is the one who is giving you the words to say, let your speech be seasoned with grace. The glory will go to God because God is the one whose wisdom is emanating from your mouth because it is in your heart. The opportunity is not about us, but it is about God. And then finally, in 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 17. Listen to the word of the Lord. Now, when the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was circling the city. 
The servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, Oh Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Elisha and his servant are in a place where they are surrounded by the enemy. The enemy has an army with horses and chariots who have circled the city and the servant is ready to give up. Uh, he's ready to throw in the towel. He's afraid because it's no way that he can see them getting out of this alive. But Elisha says, don't fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. But as Elisha's servant looks, all he sees is the enemy. And so Elisha prays, Lord, open my servant's eyes that he may see. Let him see that we are not alone. Let him see that there is an innumerable army of the horses and chariots of the Lord around us who are protecting us and with us. And so even when it looks like we are outnumbered, when we are outmatched, when it looks like victory is impossible, God is still surrounding us with his warriors fighting for us moving for us on our behalf. There is a war going on that we cannot see, but we know that the victory belongs to the Lord. It's all about the kingdom of God. Take advantage of the opportunity. God is giving us the victory. And God wants us to build his kingdom, not our empires. A church, God wants us to take this city for him. He's giving us the city. He's given us the land. We must never forget we are in a spiritual war, but there's no need to fear the enemy because we are a part of the Lord's army. The battle is the Lord's and the victory is ours in Christ Jesus. Uh, so as we come back to this idea of opportunities and not obstacles. Do you have a yeah, but problem? Do you keep finding the reasons and excuses not to move forward? I'm too old to go back to school. I'm too young to start a business. I, I'm not good enough to apply for this job. I'm too comfortable doing what I do to accept this promotion. Uh, there are some things that Christ has prepared for us so that we can have a greater opportunity to have greater influence for the Lord. But we'll never receive them if we let our yeah but stand in the way. If we want to take the land, if we want to take our community and our city for the Lord, then we need some people with a spirit that sees the opportunities instead of the obstacles and the opposition. Uh, see, we, we often expect that there will not be any obstacles to our opportunity. So when we encounter the obstacles, we assume that this must not be the will of God. So I'm going to stop because I ran into opposition. And the truth is that the opportunities are often surrounded by obstacles. But for the child of God, we don't let the obstacles and the opposition keep us from exploring the opportunities. In occupying the land God promised, there was going to be opposition for the children of Israel, but the opposition did not negate the promise. Uh, see, God uses opposition to provide his people with opportunities. So often when we see the op op obstacles, we see the opposition, and we interpret them as defeat. Some of us will quit before we get started out of fear of the opposition. But we should expect opposition to our opportunity. Opposition is part of it because God 
uses opposition to set up our opportunity. God used opposition from Joseph's brothers to, as an opportunity to promote Joseph to second in command in Egypt. God used the opposition of the Egyptian army as an opportunity to open up the Red Sea so his people could see the salvation of the Lord. God used the opposition of the Babylonians that put Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fiery furnace as an opportunity to elevate Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and prove that there is no God but the one true God. God used the opposition of the chief priest and elders as an opportunity to bring salvation to the world through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who now reigns and rules. Church, it's time for us to walk in God's promises, trust in God's word, and follow God's direction. Let us see the opportunities and not the obstacles. How has this lesson challenged you? How has it encouraged you? How has it inspired you? If it's been a blessing to you, share this lesson with others. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share the link to this lesson with others in your time of devotion and prayer. And we look forward to seeing you uh, the next opportunity uh, that we have to be together.